So this is basically going to be my first video on the channel, and um, yeah, I often forget to mention certain things in the moment, so I'm probably going to have to do a lot of voiceovers. <laughs> Basically, um, in this case, what I'm doing is I have a Amazon Fire tablet. Um, it's kind of old. Uh, it's HD Fire 7. Um, I think there's different model years, and the 7 is just the screen size. So I think this is like a 2015, 2014, something like that. It's too old to basically connect to Amazon servers properly, so it sort of connects to the App Store, but it doesn't connect to some other functionality, and it doesn't receive any updates. So basically, you could consider this tablet as effectively obsolete. Amazon doesn't want it anymore. Um, it wasn't really the world's most powerful tablet to begin with, and the, the thing about Amazon's Fire OS, their proprietary operating system, is that um, you, you basically can't install just any Android app. You have to use the Amazon Fire Store. You can't install a custom app store and you can only install select apps. You, you can't install just any Android app. There's no such thing as side loading. There's no developer mode. It's, it's locked away. So Amazon's Fire OS is really locked down and uh, here, here's the real kicker. Um, basically, you have to pay extra for the ability to not have ads on your thing. Like, the, the, the operating system itself, on the home screen and the lock screen, there's ads. I, I'm not kidding. It's... You think, like, the Samsung and LG TVs as smart TVs and stuff are bad with the, the ads on the device that you already paid for? You haven't seen nothing yet. Amazon is the future hellscape uh, cyberpunk dystopia that we are all destined for. <laughs> um, it's truly amazing. Now, personally, if I were insane enough to actually purchase an Amazon product and not just get a Samsung Galaxy Tab like anybody sane should do, don't buy an iPad, by the way. Apple and their walled garden is terrible. Better than Amazon, definitely, but um, not, not the best. If you were to go out and buy an Amazon Fire product, you would probably want to at least select, you know, not to receive the ads. Unfortunately, the purchaser of this tablet did not select that option. Basically, I got this tablet off a friend who doesn't want it anymore because it's, well, obsolete. So there's not really any use to it. Somehow, miraculously, even though it can't connect to uh, Amazon's bookstore and whatnot, it can still connect to that ad server. So uh, you still get you to enjoy your ads. Turn off that pesky ad block. Turn off that pesky ad block. And I'm sure even if you did pay for, for removing the ads, you'd still have all your data spied on. Who God knows what's inside Amazon's operating system. All of those factors basically combined into me deciding that it was about time that this, uh, this tablet, this poor, poor tablet, ran something that wasn't such a terrible operating system. And fortunately, unlike old iPads, of which I have been donated several, um, by people who seem to think that I can magically repair anything. Um, unlike iPads, um, Android tablets you actually can hack and get a different operating system to do and kind of breathe new life into them. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, long rambly thing aside, uh, let's get into actually trying to do just that. Okay, so this seems pretty simple and straightforward, hopefully. Um, all you need is Python installed, which I may or may not have installed, I don't know, on this computer. Um, it's a fairly new computer. And there's a batch file for Windows and a shell file for Linux. We're gonna run the bat file here. Ah, Python not found. Looks like we need Python. I'd rather install it in my Linux here. So we have, a uh, virtual Linux machine running in Windows subsystem for Linux and we're gonna just install Python here. Actually let's check if Python is installed. So let's go apt get install python3 apt install sudo oh python3 is already installed. Alright so let's change to this directory which uh, we're already in in Windows Subsystem for Linux. 
uh, you get really easy access to your Windows files. That's one of the really nice things about it, because it's not it's somewhere in between a virtual machine and literally running on the system natively. Uh, so let's see if we can run this shell file. Huh? Here we go. We got something. Looks like it's working. There you go. You can kind of see a uh, automated root shows up on the screen. And let's see. We can do root the device, unroot the device, spawn root shell, bootless root. All right. Well, obviously we want to root the device, so let's go with one. Found device. Could not find the binaries. Be sure to download them. Hmm. Looks like we missed a step. Okay, so I figured out the problem here, which is that you need to re-download the MTK SU, and you got to put them in files. Both the ARM and ARM64 one from ARM and ARM64 here into the automated root directory. And from there, you should be able to run it and hit one, root the device. Uh oh. Uh, these, uh, these GoPro batteries do not last very long at all, man. Alright, I think I have this working. Let's do ADB, USB. I'll have USB debugging. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. So our ADB is working. Now let's uh, run... Okay, so we're doing this in Windows now instead of in the Linux VM because the Linux VM would not cooperate with my USB. So, yeah. Common issue. Let's see. And here we go. Now it's actually working. Yeah, it's a common issue with WSL. Is that USB devices don't work right? Now open the Super SU app. Oh, would you look at that? We now have a Super SU app. Let's uh, click on that. Super SU is a super user access management tool. I've actually never used this before because I've never rooted an Android device before. It needs to be updated, all right. If you have a custom recovery like Twerp or CWM that can be used to try to install. So it's installing, or so it says. Installation success. It is recommended to reboot your device now. All right, let's 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 do that. Then. And there it is. It's booting now. Meanwhile, I will get this area cleaned up. There's a lot of cables everywhere. As you can see, one really annoying thing here is uh, the lock screen is it's got ads on it. You need to remove those. And now it's rebooted. Um, I don't see anything particularly different. I don't really know what rooting is supposed to look like. And uh, the script says press any key to continue, and I did, and it's just sitting there for a bit, so uh, I'm not really sure what it's doing. Apps, log, settings, all right. Enable super user, super user is enabled, all right. It's got a bunch of uh, stuff in here. So yeah, I think we're pretty much rooted here. A uh, quick tip here, plastic actually loves to return to its original shape when it's warmed slightly, so. Low heat. And yeah, a little bit warm.
should be good. And that's all. Okay, so this is editor me. Um, the footage of me hacking the tablet is actually from a couple months ago. Um, and there has been a few things that's happened in the meantime. I just wanted to show what the kind of final result of this project looks like because I kind of just have ended that original footage pretty abruptly, I think, so I didn't actually show what I ended up doing because that still had Fire OS on it. Um, what I ended up doing after that is I looked around for other operating systems that could be installed on it um, because even with a rooted Fire OS uh, tablet, it was really difficult to like do stuff like disable the ads or install the Play Store or whatnot. And if you install a different operating system on the tablet, there will be stuff that's broken inevitably because it's, you know, casual hackers that are making this the, these ROM hacks and or whatever you call them, getting them to work on the tablet. So since it's just volunteers doing this stuff, not everything is going to be working, but they've done a pretty good job. I found this Lineage OS to use on here. It's one of the most popular open source Android ROMs. It's got a really clean stock Android experience on it. It's really great. Um, I found an XDA developers, great forum by the way, a thread for this and a couple other models of Amazon Fire HD tablet. There's Lineage OS available for lots of them. I later actually also hacked the Samsung tablet, which I wish I had made a video on as well. Um, it's even got a little, little stylus pen and whatnot. Um, so this is like a really old first generation kind of Galaxy Tab. Uh, I think it's called the Tab 10.2 inch. So it was before they even had numbers like Galaxy Tab S7, S8, all that stuff. No, 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 no. Long before that, they didn't even have numbers. This is so old. <laughs> um, but yeah, so needless to say, Samsung has abandoned this even harder than Amazon abandoned their Fire HD tablets because this is before Samsung made their, you know, whole commitment thing to long term support of their devices, which they're really good about now, but this is before that, so, so much for this thing. And it even has a proprietary dock connector, because that was a thing back in the day. Yeah, Apple did it, let's all do it. Just like the headphone jack. <clears throat> Still butthurt about that. Anyway, both of these tablets have had new life breathed into them by Lineage OS, thanks to XDA developers. So I will, for both of these tablets, actually leave in the description a link for how to do that. But first let's power this on. It still has the original boot sound and Amazon thing then, but everything after that is going to be um, custom. Oh yeah, also if you see these um, these cracks in the glass, that's not actually the tablet glass. There's a screen protector on top of it and the glass underneath is fine. I'm just scared to remove the screen protector because I drop things. And there you go, my cute little skunk wallpaper. Um, and then we're gonna unlock this, there you go. And I've got all the standard stuff that you'd expect to find, like I've got uh, Chrome on here. Yep. And we've got Gmail, we've got the Play Store. So if I go into here, you can see the Play Store is working. Um, It'll load. The new ones actually aren't really any more powerful, so uh, they didn't really up the spec on them at all, so <laughs> barely. So really, they don't have an excuse. Uh, I've even got a file management app on there, files. Um, I forget where I downloaded that from, so it has built in the music app. I've also got random other stuff like Authenticator, Grubhub, uh, eBay, Telegram, Discord. Telegram is great. Don't use WhatsApp. Use Telegram. And it took a little while to get Google Assistant to work in general, but I believe it works now. Well, it was working. Oh well. Um, also, the other thing is, um, if you have a look at camera, I actually might have uninstalled the camera. Oh, Assistant has uh, stopped working. Okay but uh, I will tell you the reason that I uninstalled the camera um, because it doesn't work so there's no point in having it um, yeah that's the one main thing that's still broken in the current version I believe on this one on the other hand the camera does work and even better this one for some weird reason has a flash even though it's a tablet so 
even the flash works. So that's kind of a little bit useful. And this is good for using as a big screen because it's got a big screen. As long as you don't do extensive multitasking, it generally works. In fact, you can even do YouTube and like Chrome at the same time and it'll get slow if you try to multitask like that. But the fact that it even like this tablet was probably made long before multitasking was even implemented in Android. So the fact that you can even do it at all is amazing. Haha, -ha, you thought I was joking. Look at this split screen on an ancient tablet. That's a little slow, but it technically works. There you go. See? See that amazing performance there? Look at that. It technically functions. Also, Dink Pause video, so that's cool. You can watch that. Let's see how long that takes. Yeah, this one is kind of slow. Um, this one is a bit faster, although in some apps it's actually slower because uh, it has a. Oh boy. Yep, these are from last... It has a 32 bit processor, while this has a 64 bit processor. So. Some apps don't like this one as much because 32-bit, but even though it says technically a more powerful processor. It's so cute that it has a little... Hey look, it's XDA developer. Also, interestingly enough, I'm actually filming this on a Samsung Galaxy, but not a Note. A uh, Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is effectively the new Galaxy Note. Yeah, I have had a bit of a camera upgrade since I filmed the last video on a very crappy GoPro. Um, hopefully the sound is a lot better because um, for the amount that this phone costs, it better damn well do good video and audio. And uh, it kind of does. I'm, I'm actually very, very pleased with it. Uh, I basically don't even need to edit the audio in post because it's already excellent. Yeah, and as you can see, this one has looks well, a little laggy, but generally it's got better performance. You know, you click on an app and it kind of sort of loads eventually. Oh, there we go. Just didn't register the tap. See, it goes a lot faster. But yeah, you can see that um, while the performance isn't exactly amazing, it's acceptable and it's better than this one. Sweet mate, can't forget about Bob Sinclair. Now it's time for Dink Pots. Like and subscribe.